Lagos is set to experience one of its biggest events when the Lagos International Trade Fair takes center stage. What exactly should Nigerians expect? And also on the breakfast, the Nigerian Professional Football League is set to get a new lease of life with the inauguration of an interim management committee. We look at what this means for the future of the Association of Football in Nigeria. And in Off the Press, G.D. Johnson joins us for in-depth analysis of today's major newspaper headlines. He's ahead on The Breakfast. And we're back with The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Friday morning. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bopo. Thanks for joining us. And uh, as usual, we start with our top trending segment. We look at the stories trending in Nigeria. And around the world, um, the ones that can send a stage on a social space. We start with uh, yesterday's NSAS protests. It was um, an opportunity for uh, Nigerians and Lagosians and those who are concerned in the human rights community to mark uh, the memory, to remember those who passed on at the Lekki toll gate uh, on the 20th of October 2020 and subsequently, and still call for justice for those who are still in prison, about 40 of them still incarcerated, according to Amnesty International. Well, uh, the media were also there to cover the event, and uh, both sets of people, the, the, uh, the, those on the Memorial March and the media, uh, were the recipients of uh, tear gas fired by the officials of the Nigeria uh, police force. That's right, tear gas fired by the officials of the Nigeria uh, police force. It was fired to disperse the protesters at that Lekki toll gate plaza uh, yesterday. You can see some of the images of the protesters. Uh, this is just a memorial march, you know, in memory of the those who were killed, those who were slain. By what has now come to be described uh, by the judicial panel of inquiry set up by the Lagos state government looking to these this incident and police brutality in general as a massacre. Uh, you know, uh, those who were just even passing through the scene, civilians who were just moving from, you know, place to place, passing through the plaza to go on their way for their business, were also affected by the, um, the tear gas. Like I said earlier, journalists were also affected. Um, some persons were arrested. We hear that a, a television journalist who works with a, uh, a Rice TV, Obadoye, was allegedly also harassed. Um, and the procession, of course, was led by uh, Nigerian musician and singer Folari Falano, also known as Files, Mr. Files. And also a comedian, Adebo Wale Adedayo, uh, Mr. Maroko Macroni, who recently featured in the movie Aniko Lakpo, which Messi has refused to watch till now. <laughs> How do you know um, I haven't seen that? <laughs> uh, well, but what did the police say? I mean, on Twitter, I saw that the police uh, spokesman in Lagos State, uh, Mr. Benjamin Hundein, SP Benjamin Hundein um, said that uh, there were no gunshots at the event. However, that the peaceful protesters were allowed to move around until some of them, uh, I think I should, I should read his tweet so we can quote him. He says, quote, peaceful persons were allowed to move around with in without interference from the police. Some of them that decided to be lawless started mounting and started mounting the toll complex an action threatening the existing law and order in the area where dispersed with tear gas. Where dispersed with tear gas. He says, quote, there was no use of a button, neither was there a physical contact. We equally do not have any record of shooting, would, however, uh, appreciate evidence of gunshots, maybe a video to enable us to take appropriate action. He also said that no one was in custody. He said that uh, they were only held uh, for a few, those who were arrested, were only held for a few uh, minutes before being let go, but we saw pictures of people in vans. You see these vans uh, that look like uh, prisons, cages, you know, thrown inside. Um, you can see the video of a water cannon being sprayed. Uh, in, <laughs> uh, I would allow Messi jump in at this point before I come in and then move on to the next uh, uh, training topic. So, um, I mean, it's uh, very unfortunate, I'd say, that we, we're still at this point. Th this is a point where we are, if, if you look at the video very well, uh, on the screen right now, and then you see the water cannon being put out and the tear gas and what have you, 
the question would now be at what point should the police use the tear gas? Uh, this protest is that we see or the people gathered. Did they, was there any form of violence at any point? Did they look like they were armed persons? Or, you know, because, I mean, from what we're seeing, if you roll the tape back, you would see that people were gathered and tear gas has been used. But it's, it's really saddening and quite unfortunate. We understand the narrative that's been put out about the fact that, you know, at some point in time, uh, you find that some people were, you know, uh, trying to take the laws into their hands. Protests is not, has always been a tool that, you know, the people across different parts of the world use to protest the injustice, protest uh, oppression, suppression by the government or policies that are not favorable. And that's what, you know, that's what happens across different parts of the world. And just recently, uh, we had uh, Festus Kiyamo who made reference to a protest video uh, that, you know, he posted on his uh, Twitter handle, you know, from France, and you could see the crowd. I like to ask, in all of that, that crowd that we saw, you can go back to look at the video. Did you see the police, you know, using uh, the tear gas, uh, the water cannons and all of that? So it's, it's, it's quite saddening that the narrative has been put out about people who gather. It is within their right. I mean, it's within their right as long as they do not constitute a threat to national security and they're not a nuisance. And so um, from the pictures or the videos that you see, I'm wondering at what point, you know, these persons who gathered became a threat or they were armed and as, as thugs. And then you could see that. It's, it's totally, you know, a, a violation of the fundamental human right as it is. But we're hoping as a nascent democracy, as we say, that we're developing, that we get to a point where we understand that protest has always been a tool. Uh, I, I really don't understand why tigers would actually be put out at a group of persons who are saying, hey, this is what we're protesting. Usually the contrary is that you're supposed to have the police escort and ensure that, you know, the protest is not even hijacked by uh, some other element, okay? That's what's supposed to happen in a saner climb. But it's a different, you know, expectation on this part. And so every other time, the people have a right. And, and for every time we talk about all of this protest and government and policies, is that it's part of the, you know, it's part of the system, it's part of the structure, it's part of the agreement that people would obey the laws, they would pay their taxes, they would do um, certain things. And in, in turn, they expect that the government would protect their lives and, you know, properties. They expect a lot from the government. So it's a social contract. And if the contract has been breached or the government, on the other hand, is not you know living up to her expectation the people have a right in a democratic dispensation to step out and begin to you know protest in a civil manner so yes several question we need to ask is was the gathering a civil gathering has this gathering always been a civil gathering what's the essence at what point should the police you know put out the tear gas or the water cannon uh, but fingers crossed would we'll definitely you know see how all of this pans out Okay, so quickly, I mean, uh, um, I'll, I'll say that, uh, you know, Nigerians will have to, um, uh, Nigerians are asking, you know, look at the comments online, Nigerians are asking, you know, if they want to live in a country where uh, the government will uh, not allow them to protest freely uh, without being fired, you know, tear gas canisters or water cannon. You see that water cannon is not just um, uh, water, just it's water. hot, it's hot water. If it touches you, you know, <laughs> you want to be at the receiving end. Um, what the police are saying is that uh, uh, the, the people mounted the Lekito Plaza. When you say mount, what does it mean? You know, because I mean, they're not collecting no tolls. They're about to block the vehicular movement. You know, you look at the number of persons there. People didn't even show up. Look at how many people are there. Compared to the number of persons in this country who should be out there, you know, remembering those who died, people didn't show up as much as you could could have shown up, you know what I'm saying? So um, uh, when you say they mounted the tow plaza, how many of them mounted the tow plaza? Is it two, three, is it four, five persons? You know, because I mean, uh, is it six people? Okay, so you now ask yourself, what is, how, how, how cautious should we be about firing the tear gas, you know, and throwing the water cannon? How cautious should we be? Um, should we go and apprehend these five persons and, pull them down, or should we talk to them, you know, even put some body cam, say, hey, can you come, Let, let's see, let's see that you are, you are filming yourself as a police officer, filming them, 
Please calm down. Please calm down. No, move. Don't. Before, because this tear gas can take someone's life. Why not? They're it definitely. can take someone's life. There could be someone who has a high blood. You know, so was it necessary? Um, was necessary? Was, was, was a force that was applied? Was it necessary? And I know the police officers know their standard operating procedures. All right? Now, what they say is that if persuasion fails, force must be applied. If persuasion fails, force must. That's what they teach them. All right? I've had policemen say this and quote this since I was in primary school, secondary school. Now, when you're even applying force, you also need to decide what amount of force to apply. You don't just apply any kind of force. They have their levels and their steps. So um, if the police are saying that, uh, you know, people mounted the toll plaza, what does it mean when you say they mount? Someone was saying, you know, to me that, oh, they had a coffin. They wanted to place the coffin there. These are things that people do. It's not the first time. You know, so you now have to decide, have we gotten to the level where we need to fire tear gas or not? Um, but like I said, you can see the coffins there, all right? Like I said, um, you know, these are things people just want to vent. You allow them vent, okay? You allow them vent. You allow them, ex if it's a coffin, is there a human being in that coffin? No. If they're, they're climbing something, you can say, okay, can you calm down? Okay, let's try. Call the leaders. Please, you see this is not allowed. You know, maybe that was applied. Who knows? But I'm also concerned about the journalists who were there as well, who had to run for their life. All right, they had to run for the other. One of them was shouting in the video they filmed, tear gas or tear gas or, you know. So I think that Nigerians, the conversations they're having amongst themselves now is um, we're going to cast a vote for a government that will guarantee our safety. Even when we go out to protest, they will guarantee that we will not be fired at, you know. Who knows? Even in the, in the excitement of the whole thing, the frenzy, a trigger happy policeman would have fired a live round, like they say, stray bullet. You know what I'm saying? And then what I'm hearing people say is, okay, you come out with such force, force, you know, just a few, few number of persons, you're nothing harmful. Are we seeing you apply that same force in tackling insecurity in the country? Are we seeing you go after criminals with the same amount of force? Those, those that are you, you, turn, you see how armed to the teeth they are when... When they hear there's an uh, ancestor memorial. <laughs> or oh, oh, there's, there, there's even a rally. I mean, you remember, there's, there's a rally that happened, uh, the 1st October rally. If you were on the streets uh, that particular Saturday, I'm sure you were, but probably you left quite early. Yeah. So if you were headed towards my destination, it would have been something else. You need to see, you know, the show of force. I call it a show of force. You need to see the might, the military. <laughs> and then you begin to ask yourself, so we have all of this men. And we have all of this, you know, right. gadgets right. and what have you. But we need to move on, Kofi. Um, we're hoping that we do better because, uh, for instance, we, we cannot every other time make all of this comparison. Uh, just like the one Festus Kuyamo made recently about, you know, the protest and said, oh, it was a global issue. But you also need to learn the lesson that the people were gathered. There was no point. There was nowhere we saw a video or, you know, police officers trying to, uh, you know, scare the people away by using tear gas and what have you. You need to see that video and understand where I'm coming from. But moving away quickly is the issue of theft. And uh, the Boeing State Governor, Devu Mai, has suspended the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Power and Energy, and uh, Engineer Godwin Wankwo, and a Special Assistant to the Governor of Public Utility, Honorable Emmanuel Nwagbo, over alleged theft. I hope I got that correctly. Uh, that's the issue. Uh, according to this is that... Uh, you know, their experience, uh, it was a concern over the volume of diesel that has been lost in the hands of the persons involved in the business of street light, adding that uh, the ESCO therefore should resolve all the concerns in the business of street light supervision. And, and uh, the story is almost endless. So I think that the DSS has also been involved in the case. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> So it, it's, it's quite funny, right? So I remember that once upon a time in Corsica State, uh, you know, if you, if you leave in that state prior to now, uh, something about the street light, and then all of a sudden the street light actually uh, 
was no longer there. So you move around in the night. It's, it's one of the things because uh, generally, prior to a previous governor, Donald Duke, it was known as a state of tourism. And so for a tourist destination, one of the beautiful things you see is that everywhere is lit at night. All of the streets and all of the roads, everywhere is lit. But at some point, all of that you know, became history. And people started asking. And then the issue of theft came in. Now, I'm bringing this, you know, this narrative because of theft. And they say that people are stealing. And who are the people stealing the components from the street light? Because um, it's not like I, I'm an engineer. If you're in that state, you're not an engineer. So it would definitely be people who understand the dynamics and people who are close. So it's just quite funny for me. I find it very hilarious that uh, it's almost the same thing that's happening. And so diesel has been stolen. You can imagine the things that we're talking about. <laughs> and, you know, someone has to be suspended. So it goes a long way to show that uh, there's a lot that needs to be done. Like I say, you probably might not have you know, uh, the opportunity. You might never become the president of this country, and that's for a fact. You might not become the governor, and you might not become, you know, the permanent secretary or senator. But in your sphere of control, where you are, uh, there's a lot of influence that you have. Imagine that we all do the right thing every other time. Imagine what would become of our country and of our state. But it's a good thing, you know, that the police is actually involved because it's said that uh, it's alleged. Uh, so we're hoping that investigations will be done and uh, the law would take its course if he's found or they are found guilty of the accusation. Okay, let's move on to the, 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 the third uh, trending story. Um, I'll uh, look at the, the details and then when I'm done looking at the details, I see you come in with analysis and then we round up. Um, a petrol tanker exploded along the Lagos Ibano Expressway on Thursday morning. Uh, I mean, it was uh, a hot topic because of the importance of uh, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway and the danger such an uh, incident um, portends for life and property. The incident was set to have occurred at uh, Raromi town before Shagam uh, interchange in Ogun State. The explosion reportedly affected 18, an 18 seater passenger bus uh, which was caught in the raging fire. According to the Federal Road Safety Corps, uh, the FRSC, which is Nigeria's uh, road safety agency. Uh, details of the incident, you know, uh, were sketchy at the time the reports uh, emanated, uh, but we later got information from uh, the Federal Road Safety Corps that day. Uh, they said they had uh, closed, you know, um, to public route, the, uh, to public use rather, that road, and they put out some information advising motorists and the public to use alternative routes on the Lagos Ibarra Expressway due to that uh, explosion. The um, FRC sector commander in Ogun State, um, Ahmed Umar, actually put out a statement. He issued that in Abe Okuta advising motorists to make use of other routes to avoid a necessary delay. It wasn't really close, but it was um, a sort of a rescue operation and uh, it meant that it would slow down the traffic. And you can see you know, what traffic on that road looks like on a day that you have something uh, like this. So, uh I mean, just like you have, you have mentioned rightly, it's that uh, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway is very critical. And for someone as myself, I stopped plying that road a long time. You know, I took that decision way back when I was, you know, uh, an undergraduate student at university, probably coming for holidays. I stopped taking this particular road coming to Lagos. And uh, it's been a big decision. So if I cannot afford to go by, and not that that's you know, entirely safe, then I will for several dangers such as this. So if you're not talking about you know, a tanker explosion, you're talking about theft, you're talking about robbery. If you're not talking about robbery, you're going to talk about the fact that the roads are horrible, maybe there's flooding. So there's a lot of issue. I mean, it's a death trap, if you ask me. But as a country as us, I know that we have leaders who constantly leave this country uh, for vacation and then sometimes they go for different reasons. So I ask myself, is it just about sightseeing? Do we just uh, travel to these other countries, developed countries? And every other time we come back and wish that Nigeria was like this or the countries. Is there anything that we can learn from them? Is there anything that they're doing that we can imbibe and also try to implement? Is there really anything positive that we can actually see from? So I have always wondered if it's not possible to have uh, a means where a sensitive product as petrol has been transported through the pipeline because it's, it's, it's quite critical that we, we don't have to have you know, this product on the same road as user because it's quite sensitive. 
I mean, sometimes you find out that these vehicles are packed on the road. So you find tankers packed on the road with sensitive products. And trust me, it is always a scary sight because anything can happen at the slightest, you know, error, human error. Anything can happen by a passerby. I, I just think that we need to do better as a country. I mean, that's a question that I keep asking. We need to find a way, you know, to do these things. It won't, we won't be the first country. We won't be the first. So, and I don't think these things are rocket science. But that's what leadership is all about. It's, it's quite unfortunate that this happens. And, and the roads, are, that's a very crucial road, that, like we've mentioned earlier. And we should be thinking of the safety of those roads. And so if you're not talking about armed robbery, you're talking about the fact that you could be a victim of a tanker explosion. Why do we have you know, these vehicles applying the same road where you have commercial vehicles? Uh, is there a way to have all the means where the same uh, vehicles, like the tankers that are moving with petroleum products or fuel, whatever it is you want to call it, sensitive product, like I would like to say, uh, have another way that can, they can move, not necessarily on the same particular route where you have, um, you know, others moving like, you know, regular passengers, uh, because it's sensitive and anything can actually happen. But we need to, you know, bring that to an end, Kofi. Yeah, if you yeah have but before to we bring that to an end, just to do... Uh, uh, rounding up uh, of um, you know a question that that um, <laughs> we'll, we'll ask ourselves and I usually ask is um, <laughs> when we have such incidents um, <laughs> do we do we do we see any report you know because it's very important to have um, an opportunity to learn from what happens you know an opportunity to end from what learn from what transpires in such tragedies <laughs> so that at the end of the day we don't see them being repeated you know so why did this tanker explode what happened there needs to be a report something needs to be put out to say this is the reason there was an accident or, or there was overheating or there was something wrong from the product you know what we see in the country is that we have you know accidents without proper reporting with our proper investigation so that we prevent future occurrences. I mean, it happens in the aviation industry where if there's an accident, because of the sensitive nature and the delicate nature of aviation transportation, um, they will retrieve the black box. They'll, re they'll look for flight communications data to, to try and see what happened. You know, and that's why in Nigeria have the AIB, which is the Accident Investigation Bureau. Now, for the Federal Safety Corps, for instance, do they have uh, in, an investigative uh, department, you know, Mercy, where they can, they can investigate the immediate and remote causes of these accidents with a view to giving the public some information so that they do not see this occurring again? It's very important. Um, I'll quickly say that on, I think it was Wednesday night, you know, making my way to Lagos Island, I saw somewhere on the Bagada Expressway that a tanker had overrun the median. It was in the middle of the median, and uh, Federal Safety Corps or Commission va bus van had to you know, cordon off the service lane, okay, so that people wouldn't use it. Now, is it because the drivers are drunk? Are they overspeed? We need to know, because when we have reports, all right, we have investigations to help us with information so that these uh, are not repeated again. All right, um, we, we have to go. Um, hopefully, we don't see such a repeat uh, or a bit of such an incident again. We'll take a break. When we come back, uh, we'll have a look at uh, what the papers are saying. Today, Johnson is standing by. Stay with us.